What are NFTs? Is it a bubble or here to stay? Okay, cool. Uh, so everybody that's tuned in, my name is Steve McGarry. I'm a co-founder of uh, Grow Your Base. Grow Your Base is like an NFT membership program uh, that gives investors exclusive access to NFT deals. We provide them with educational content and ultimately direct distribution of NFTs uh, to them. It's been referred to as like a, a community-driven metaverse-focused fund. Uh, that we really enjoy, and we've been working with some amazing projects. Also, the co-hosts of uh, the crypto economics focused channel, Hack Crypto, uh, that Anna mentioned earlier. And with that said, a lot of Grow Your Base members have actually brought up these speakers that are on the panel today, uh, which is very exciting. I, I was getting some DMs earlier about a couple of uh, the speakers here, so I'm excited to to get into this and learn a little bit more. So let's start, I guess, with some short introductions. I wanna make sure that everybody has a chance here. Um, let's do like, uh, I was gonna wait another minute, but let's just go ahead and do the short introductions. Uh, so let's start with you, Michael, maybe like under a minute of who you are, what you're building, and just the topic, just to keep things juicy, let's, um, go through the topic of if NFTs are in a bubble. Yeah, um, cool. How do you all read me? Loud and clear. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Michael. I'm the founder of Pylons. Uh, we are a digital property blockchain. So, you know, we are trying to push the boundaries of what kinds of property you can own on the internet. Uh, and in particular, I'm really interested in things that carry rights in an interesting way, um, trying to make things more programmable and more sort of full featured. So um, do I think NFTs are a bubble? I think that it's a speculative situation. Um, you know, the kinds of NFTs that exist now are just the beginning of, I think, what's going to be a really interesting field of digital property. So while in some sense it's a bubble, um, I think some of the the sort of like some of the stuff we're doing now will fade away. Um, digital property is not a bubble and is going to get much, much bigger. Got it. Well said. Uh, I see got some more people joining here. Is it uh, Sharon is how I pronounce the, your first name? Uh, Shreon. Uh, Shreon. Uh, fine, yeah. Cool. So just yeah, a sure. short introduction. Yeah, sure. So uh, hi, folks. Uh, I had the NFT and gaming ecosystem here at Polygon, and I've definitely uh, I've been here at Polygon for almost two years now. And uh, the key thing I've done in space is uh, I would say reaching out to each and every game in the ecosystem, especially in the Ethereum ecosystem, and uh, supporting them with their scaling scaling needs and whatever they require. And especially these days, since now when gas prices shot up and I think NFTs went mainstream. Everyone was looking for a scaling solution, and uh, I think their polygon has definitely added a lot of value. Yeah, hundred percent. And let's do uh, Te Tejas Chopra. Yes, yes. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tejas Chopra. I am a senior software engineer at Netflix. Um, I work on the data storage platform here. So Netflix Studios, Netflix streaming platform, the content that they generate, I architect solutions to store them efficiently and retrieve them. Um, and I'm a blockchain and NFT enthusiast. So I learn about it. I'm curious about the technology in my free time. Um, and uh, I, I'm so uh, like, I, I feel great to be in the company of such esteemed guests who have such deep like fingers into this uh, um, into this domain. And whether or not NFT is a bubble, um, I think that today we have a lack of tools um, or infrastructure to allow seamless uh, adoption of NFTs for common people. So I think that's why it may seem to many that it is just a bubble. Uh, but I think that with maturity, uh, this is this will get better. And uh, it is not a bubble, is what I think. So, well said, well said. Yeah, and I. I enjoy the fact that you are from Netflix, and I'm excited to to dig into that mainstream adoption phase uh, here shortly. Sasha? Hello. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, I'm uh, Sasha, uh, based uh, 
blockchain founder. So we've had NFTs uh, since 2018, I guess, and now we have a lot of projects uh, with NFT tokens. Uh, I don't think it's a bubble. Maybe speak up a little louder. Yeah, and I don't think it's a bubble, sorry. Uh, and, and because uh, actually NFTs are very natural, so just uh, uh, some kind of a generalization of like uh, a real world contract, and uh, they basically uh, can be bubble in the long run. So they're here to stay, and we need to make sure that uh, we work on their like uh, real world connection and uh, somehow make sure that. Uh, all those like legal things that need to be done now uh, will be complete to, to, to create a real connection. Uh, so NFTs are here to stay. Got it. Got it. Yeah, if possible, check the, check the microphone uh, that you got on there just to make sure the sound is on. So if a, uh, if a couple of speakers come in um, while we're talking, I'll try and get them to do an intro while we're going through this. But the first question, uh, let's try and do it like two minutes each. What's the best utility you guys have seen? Because I think that in 2017, you know, a lot of people were talking about utility and differentiating through utility tokens and things like that. And I think that we're kind of seeing that stage now. Uh, what's the best kind of utility NFT uh, that you guys have seen that's utilized and is live right now? Let's start with you, Michael. Yeah. Um, yeah nothing. I don't know. I, I everything is just so tantalizing. I haven't seen anything that like really blows me away yet. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Parallels NFT did something um, a week ago or so where they had this faucet for cards that are playable cards in their game, but that like one of the players using the faucet would get um, you know this additional or this this like ultimate version of the card. And I really like that because I think what I, what I want to start seeing out of NFTs and, and what Pylons is sort of like partly trying to do is to make the underlying, to make it more of a programmable ecosystem where it's not just like the same contract with a different skin on it. So when I start seeing people doing a faucet, but like, you know, somewhat stochastic behavior or, you know, something that's different about the underlying code and the contract behaves in a way that is that is part of the art then that really excites me. And, you know, um, maybe other people have seen more of, of that sort of thing. I still feel like everything is like just right on the edge of like tantalizing, but, but not fulfilled quite yet, which actually is a really exciting time to be in the space. Well said, well said. It's a signal that it's super early. Let's, uh, let's go on to Shiranj. Let's see if you have any insights there. So definitely, I think, uh, especially I'm a metaverse DJ and a gaming uh, sort of enthusiast. So I would say the best thing is play to win that everyone has seen. And I think with Axie Infinity, it has been proven as well. People, folks have bought houses in Philippines just by playing Axie Infinity. I think that has never happened in the world. You are just playing a game, enjoying it. You're enjoying the dopamine levels and everything because that's what gaming is about. And still earning and earning so much that you are able to buy houses. And another aspect I would say is, uh, this is something that I truly believe in, and this would be like really big in the next three, four years, play to one, especially when these Web2 games on board the Web3 space, some components of this Web3 space, uh, so this NFT economy, let's say in PUBG, you could say like, you can uh, buy your Kevlar, your gun and all these things as an, you can just within a few clicks, make it like uh, tokenize this as an NFT. So that can definitely add a value as well. And they can be sold on, let's say in few years, you can see maybe PUBG assets or FIFA or any other games assets or selling on OpenSea or any other curated marketplace or as such. Another thing should would be the digital ownership aspect uh, for artists. Let's say for a normal artist, uh, let's see artist journey. Uh, artist creates his art and everything. They then they go and try to sell it to a museum. Maybe he sells his art around five thousand dollars. That's good. Then the museum, uh, so sorry, not a museum, okay, pr a private gallery or something. Then the private gallery sells it to a museum of around thirty, forty thousand dollars after a few years. Then the museum sells it to a private collector, maybe at a million or maybe 500k or 700k. But who earned the least? The artist. <laughs> who created the art? Who, whose vision was it? So I think uh, within a few years, you need the art went like 50x or maybe 100x. So the, that's where digital ownership comes in. Let's say you can attach to a hard code, the royalties into, it, the, into the smart contract uh, at every sale and whenever the NFTs change hands or any assets change hands, 10% or 5% of the royalties go to the artist as well. So he knows like he created something years back, but he's still learning by it. And uh, the ways that the traditionally happening is, I think it's a little flawed 
where NFT can definitely add a lot of value. And mm -hmm. I think uh, Michael is already working on uh, something similar like digital ownership. So that's definitely that's something that I'm also talking about. Yeah, yeah I love that. Axie is a great example. The play to earn model uh, is pretty mind bending. And I love that they've worked with a lot of people in the Philippines and things like that is really inspirational in how they're like lifting a lot of these people up and they're able to do it as a full-time job. I think that's incredible and yeah. such a great, uh, such a great example. Moving on, uh, Tejas, what, uh, yeah. what do you think in terms of the utility so far personally that you've seen? I think I personally like uh, the way NBA Top Shots has adopted NFT. Um, NBA Top Shots is uh, like a collection of different uh, plays and videos of NBA uh, and it's packaged together. Uh, so what I like about it and why do I feel that it's somewhat the best utility is because it hides the fact that there is a blockchain on the back end. To the customer, to the people that are buying it, they don't even know what it's running on. So the interface is seamless and slick. Uh, the tools, I, I feel that at this point, because it's in such a nascent stage, we need um, applications that do not allow people, like do not uh, give too many knobs to people. Like it's very difficult to explain to people what DeFi is, what yield farming is. But if we can take that away, that complexity away, that would really increase the adoption of NFTs. So I think I found that game to be really uh, like walking towards these this particular goal. And I feel that that probably would be carried over to different uh, verticals. And I agree with Michael and Shreyansh that there are just like so many possibilities with NFTs. Uh, we are just dipping our toes into this now. Yeah, definitely agree. And I think the the elephant in the room here is that you work at Netflix and uh, the, <laughs> the, the idea that, you know, capturing video and moments and things like that um, are pretty interesting, that that's something that you're uh, really focused on. So hopefully there's some, some juicy information there coming <laughs> soon. <laughs> so Sasha, what are your, what are your thoughts on utility? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, I, I think that um, we should like um, tell between uh, different types of NFTs uh, because uh, uh, we have NFTs used for many uh, different applications for uh, digital art, for uh, some kind of like uh, DeFi tokens that are used, for example, in such products as Avi. Uh, and they're all different, and some of them have like more utility. And uh, those who have like intrinsic value, more of intrinsic value, for example, NFTs that are connected to some kind of like a lending contract, for example, uh, they're very natural. And um, I think they have provided the most utility because uh, they uh, do have some, some kind of intrinsic value that, that you don't have to come up with somehow. And there is like another type of tokens which are connected to, for example, digital art. And here things get a little more complicated, I think. Uh, I believe that uh, digital art will be using NFTs in the future as well. Uh, but I think that we need to, you know, to, to do something for it because uh, now we don't have enough like legal backing for this and anybody can use the same picture and issue uh, another NFT with the same picture. Uh, so there is some like uh, work needed to, to connect the world of like uh, digital NFTs with the real world. But it's going to be there. So I think what, what is happening now is going to create some kind of a standard for uh, copyright protection and for uh, future protocol that handle uh, basically uh, uh, digital uh, property uh, rights. So um, uh, the most utility that uh, I can see in NFTs now are within DeFi ecosystem. And um, if you can like to, uh, somehow like uh, gamify it and create some kind of games, for example, like CryptoKitties or games that uh, are built on waves now, uh, it like it retains the intrinsic value because it's like connected to DeFi, it's connected, it's connected to collectibles, and uh, the value is more like natural and obvious. And the next uh, level of NFTs is digital art that is very fine, I think, but it just needs a little bit, a little bit more work in terms of like uh, 
uh, verification of who created the uh, digital art, uh, some kind of like KYC and, and stuff. So, uh, but I think we were going to be there, and um, somehow uh, this bubble uh, maybe uh, is bursting a little bit right now, but it's, it's going <laughs> to be back because uh, this thing is very real, and uh, all we need to do is to just finish those protocols and uh, work on some details that have been left out up to now. Got it. Got it. And this next one is what I always consider the ground zero question. Uh, I've, I have this debate with a lot of people, talk to a lot of people in DMs. Uh, some people get really passionate about it. But in terms of where each of you think ground zero for mainstream adoption comes from uh, with NFTs, I think there's a really great spectrum here. Like a lot of you guys have are working on different things, similar things. So I think we'll get some wide ranging answers in terms of uh, where you believe ground zero uh, will be for hundreds of millions of people to come into using the NFT uh, technology. So let's start with you, Michael. Ah, thanks, Steve. Um, I'll tell you what I'm very confident about, which is that uh, the first mass market uh, digital property application will be a mobile application, a mobile native application. Mm. Um, so I think that, you know, we need to work. I think the user experience is going to be one way or another has to be solved before we can have anything that looks like a mass market experience. So, you know, for that reason, that's why Pylons is mobile first. That's why we're all about mobile SDKs so that people can build mobile apps that are blockchain powered because I'm confident that whatever is going to break through, it's going to be mobile. Um, I'm really interested in um, fantasy sports as a potential um, real first groundbreaking application. I think you know mobile games like Axie potentially also a really a really big application. Um, I think uh, I think if you look at ticketing for streaming events like major major like streaming events, that could potentially be something really interesting. Those are the things that, that really excite me. But fundamentally, what I'm out here doing is like building an SDK and building a mobile wallet system so that whoever does have the big idea, you know, has the tools that, that are needed to make it to make it go. Well said. Well said. That's actually a good segue because I would agree gaming is ground zero. Uh, Shriyansh, what would yeah, you? Sure. So uh, again, on the gaming front itself, I think <laughs> gaming is the easiest pathway, right? If you go any to any Web2 folk, of a web two guys and you say uh, you try, try to explain zk rollups are any scaling solutions to them it doesn't make sense to them it, they shouldn't care but you just ask them play a game that will happily to do comply right so the key would be i think the ui ux part because uh, i've been in this space for a while now but still i haven't used fiat on rams much but now since nfts when mainstream all the new peeps are trying to get in but they don't know how to navigate their way through metamask managing their private keys and all, all these things so i think meta transactions ui ux fiat on rams so all everything so I think they just already mentioned like NBA top shots. So I think that is definitely a very good example. I think uh, if there's one solution. I think if you have seen poly market, the pre uh, prediction market uh, that really went big in the during the US presidential elections. So I think that's on Polygon. And I think they were clocking around hundred million dollar volume on daily basis back then during elections. And the entire tech is built on Pol Polygon end to end meta transactions. And the user wouldn't know he's on a he wouldn't uh, realize the difference between in a Web three and a Web three app. That's how they've built it. That, that's so smooth. You just come with a debit card or credit card, buy the funds and place a bet, uh, predict what you, whatever you want to. That's how it should be. And I think uh, this is the end. On the gaming side, I think tooling and SDK. Uh, SDKs, APIs, tooling, that sort of stuff. Because you can't, I can't go to Activision and ask them, okay, per, you should port because of this play to one model. It's like really good and like crazy good and, and such. But you, you have to, let's say, change your 90% of your architecture. They'll definitely laugh at my face. Uh, Face like they can't do that, right? They're already generating like billions in revenue. But I say, okay, just do one thing: plug this SDK and use for a, sm a small component or maybe a some small smaller game that you can afford to, and just see how it goes. So I think that would be something they'll uh, they'll also agree to. I can't say to change your architecture. So I think tooling SDKs that would be the key UI UX. These are the things that can uh, onboard the next hundred million users from the web two because. Uh, Everyone is looking to get into this space. There's some barrier. I think it's a mental barrier, sort of, because when I explain to all these, uh, any of my friends or families, okay, don't send funds here. It's a ERC20 chain. This is a US address. This is that address. They'll get confused. Okay, wait, what to do? Where to do? 
right mm-hmm. uh, so we have to uh, bridge that complexity and make them understand as well and uh, sort of uh, provide them the tooling like uh, michael also mentioned they don't like the end user shouldn't care what tech is behind right what, what blockchain they are using or whatever is it on the back end you drive a ferrari it's fast you don't want to know okay engine is good okay. you don't want to know how much cylinders and all these things you know it's a ferrari it would be fast so how yeah. that's how it would be yeah yeah and just to double up on that um what have you seen really that you enjoyed on polygon so far that's a good user experience that you've really kind of wanted to highlight in terms of definitely game. i think there are i would definitely name games so poly poly market is uh, being a prediction market i think zedrun is a game i have seen web2 users also and some web2 folks as well asking about me and some on twitter on twitter as a crypto twitter as well web2 uh, folks talking about zedrun zedrun is something everyone should, should try out and alethia.ai the it's a very noted, innovative idea i think uh, they are like really good everyone should try that out alethia.ai would be a very big break in the nft space segment as well so i think that would be that would be really cool definitely try out poly market zedrun mega crypto police a game like sim city the user experience is flawless you come in and uh, just like sim city you are paying a little uh, where you put like coins and then such you just uh, put in a little gas on matic and it's a lot, almost around 0.0001 dollars so that that is also that we give aid as aid drops so i think that definitely eases the user experience as well and people also like and people also love and they have a lot of users as well interaction too so that is something you should try out yeah. cool very cool and as a side note everybody that's watching listening to this you should be go signing up for all the games <laughs> that were just mentioned sign up for everybody on this panel's uh platforms and services that's how you support the space that's how you help everybody grow all boats rise so um that should go without saying but always want to mention that uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> jazz hands everybody go do it so next up sasha um what are your thoughts yeah so i think uh, basically one guy said before me it's, it's very right because uh, the gaming is the most natural application for NFTs, and it's really natural because everything that you can uh, see in a game, uh, all your like items that you generate to buy, sell, are essentially NFTs. So it's very natural, and people seem to get it easily. For example, my 80-year-old uh, son plays NFT games, and it's not a problem for him to to play them. So they are very natural. So and it's very strange that it took so long uh, to actually uh, have a lot of those games, and I think they are just starting. And as soon as like major publishers uh, uh, embrace NFTs, we're going to see a huge push in this space. Uh, so gaming is huge it's because it's very natural. It's like maybe the, ma- the most natural application on NFTs. And uh, I think another thing that should be big, in my opinion, is uh, uh, you know, some kind of like digitalization of real world contracts, for example, like insurance. Because, uh, in essence, any insurance contract is, a, is an NFT because they're they are all like different, you know. So, uh, they're based on your like specific case, so they insure something specific. So, uh, and I think insurance is quite big, and we'll see like insurance markets soon, uh, some kind of like define for insurance. And people will be able to basically uh, uh, trade those like insurance contracts. So um, NFTs have too many applications, and I think not only gaming, but gaming is huge and it's like the most natural thing. But also like more uh, maybe maybe profound applications uh, are going to be the ground zero, and this is just the next step. And we'll start with gaming, but we'll move on to. All uh, things that are not digitized, and basically any any contract is an NFT in essence. So, uh, gaming first, uh, uh, all types of real world contracts uh, will come next. Got it. Got it. So the next piece here that I wanted to go through with each of you guys was around industries. Uh, I think, you know, we kind of touched on it there with the ground zero question. I think we can all sort of agree on gaming and certain things, maybe uh, entertainment, Netflix, hint, hint, uh, maybe maybe something there. But ultimately, uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the industries that are, I didn't want to use the word disrupt just because it's a little cliche, but that NFTs will help ultimately outside of what we just mentioned. 
what do you guys feel will be the mostly impacted industries? Let's start again with you, Michael. Wow. Um, yeah, I think to me, the most interesting long-term thing right now is copyright. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm sitting there, I've got a tab open with the Burn Convention and I'm reading through sort of like, what is sort of the, you know, what are the basic building blocks of international copyright? Thinking about like, how do I build something that, that really implements this in a way that is reliable, right? Because you see people out there doing NFTs that sort of say as a disclaimer, but also this isn't copyright. And I think we should do NFTs that are copyright. Um, so I'm really interested in that and rights management in general. And I think that it will really be, it, it, you know, you could really change the structure of the industry. If you look at what a musician gets paid for a Spotify stream right now, it's not a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if you had a stronger, if you had a, if you were managing copyright more directly, you potentially could, um, change some of the balance of power in that way. And in a way that I think would be really good for the artistic community. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm also really excited about sort of hybrid physical events and sort of the creating artifacts that result from physical experiences. So I'm, I'm interested in event tickets that come with door prizes that, you know, I'm interested in scavenger hunts that are physical that, you know, produce NFTs when you go to places. Um, so I'm interested in sort of this like use of, of, blockchain as a way to augment uh, the things we physically experience in our lives and to be sort of both a, a history of what we've done and also, you know, bragging rights and, and to a certain extent, tradability. So those are the things I'm thinking about uh, right now, but there's so much more. Yeah, very cool. I like that. Redeeming an NFT when you go to like a concert and things like that. That's um, very cool. You mentioned ticketing earlier, and I think that's a really great um, concept just with secondary markets and things like that, royalties and all the all the goodies that could happen there. Triage? I think uh, exactly like Michael said, because I also touched base on the artist community, how they can leverage this economy. And I think it's more about the digital ownership. Uh, that's the key, I think. And it can be hard coded into the contracts. How many times even the hands change and the transaction is on chain, everything is on chain. You'll get the royalties or anything. You know how it you know it's legit right you can check its history and everything uh, you know uh, it's license it's copyright everything it uh, can be on chain and again the even on the ticketing part i think that's a really cool use case even on the collector's friend as well uh, we have seen people who take uh who go to like famous concerts like beatles or any any of these major artists and maybe k-pop artists are really big and on the ticketing they uh, collect those tickets like this is of my dad concert and there you go. And as an NFT, you can, if you can redeem with them as an NFT, even if you attend the concert, you can just show it out. Okay. It's here. Uh, I went to this concert back when it was back like 10, 15 years back. Uh, it's still here. It's always, it will always be there. And you can auction it off maybe after 20 years or anything, or maybe just holding it there to yourself. That's something really cool. And I think a uh, few of the projects are already doing that really good. I think on the K-pop front, there's a project called Get Protocol. It's already, I think, on Polygon. They're already live on Polygon. So before the pandemic, they used to do like, uh, since the physical events have stopped, but they used to do like 200K, 100K uh, plus ticketing on uh, on chain. And uh, for the K-pop concerts, because K-pop fandom, everyone knows, it's like really cool. And I think there was a Bitcoin conference as well back in 2019 in uh, South America. So that was also, uh, Zawadi was the partner who did it on Polygon. So ticketing is a very major aspect. So I think somewhere along, along these lines, insurance, these things, and digital, the biggest thing is the digital ownership. Yeah. yeah. One thing I think, uh, metaverse as well, metaverses as well. Metaverse somehow come, comes intertwined with gaming, and people also get confused. If you mix AR, VR, then it becomes, uh, with gaming, it becomes a metaverse. So I think, uh, let's let's say, Boosin Protocol is working on something like opening a commodity, a commodity store with a, uh, on metaverse, let's say, decent land. They've already, I think, purchased the land last week. So whatever, you, let's say, anything you buy on their store, maybe it's clothing or anything. So it's, it will be backed by an NFT with the ownership rights. It will, the physical aspect or asset will be delivered to your homes, wherever you are. And you'll have the NFT for it as well. That can be redeemed and uh, burnt uh, at your dispense. So I think that's really cool. that's a really cool example. And we'll be seeing a lot of use cases with metaverses, not just the game on the gaming fronts. Yeah. Yeah. I love what's being done now with experiments around the physical and digital 
world. I just, I think that that's so interesting. Something that's in the metaverse, you know, can be redeemed and tracked yep. and everything um, in the, the IRL world, I guess <laughs> yeah. you call it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Sasha, what do you, uh, what do you think is, is going to be the, the next industries? Yeah, so as I said, I think like, uh, for example, financial services, for example, uh, insurance markets, and uh, you'll be able to basically uh, issue like individual insurance, and it can be like redeemable, like transferable. So it's quite interesting. Uh, and um, digital property and like some kind of uh, uh, copyright protection is also uh, a very obvious direction for development but i think we need to work a little bit more on the protocols as well so it's not only about like a real world uh legal side for example yes but uh, uh the very protocols in the, uh, are a little um, bit not ready i guess for example uh if you like uh, yeah, if you're like a digital artist and you create a digital art and there's nft uh which is connected to it uh still anybody can use your like digital art uh it's probably okay but maybe not so maybe we can create some kind of like a leasing protocol so people would lease your nft to uh, show your digital art and it's just one example uh, and i think it's quite important to understand that nfts are uh, not so new but still not like developed uh, enough, I guess. So we still need to work on the protocols, and uh, eventually, uh, with some like real-world connection and some kind of legal uh, backing, so to say, because we would probably need some new laws for uh, NFTs. NFTs should be like somehow connected to copyright laws. Uh, when it's ready, uh, we could basically use NFTs for. <laughs> most of the things that we encounter like in our day-to-day -day life so to say because uh, uh, very many things uh, basically uh, maybe I don't know, not, not, not all of them but uh, maybe most of things and like contracts that we interact with can be uh, turned into NFTs so it's just a matter of time and adoption uh, gaming first and uh, all the rest will come next mm -hmm. got it so now to Yas, I want to mm -hmm. do this as a two-part question here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, how could entertainment be helped by NFTs, given your current um, stance at, at Netflix? How could entertainment really gain value from it? And then you personally, what do you think the other industries could be that would gain value from using them? Sure. Uh, so Netflix actually hasn't dipped their toes into NFTs, and I don't think they are thinking about it at this point. That's what I know of. Um, and I think it'll take a lot more of user adoption and seamless uh, uh, interfaces for any of the big players to try to dip their toes into this. Uh, because uh, first impression is the last impression, so they really want to not spoil that. Um, I personally feel that it will disrupt. Um, so when, when I started looking into this space, what I thought was whatever I use on my phone, or whatever I see on my laptop, I started thinking, what all can be influenced or better by NFTs? And social media was a very interesting thing because today we see that there is fake news everywhere. Uh, you do not have any basis of any comments that are made by people. Uh, and I also saw that Jack Dorsey, uh, the founder of Twitter, sold his first tweet as an NFT. So what if all the content that you share on social media, be it a picture of the Eiffel Tower or something, can that be made as an NFT so that you always have the authorship and the ownership rights for it? So I feel that along with gaming and mobile, uh, social media would be a very great way to get 100 million users onto the NFTs. And whatever picture they upload, whatever tweet they share would be backed by an NFT. And we, you will always know exactly the source of the data. So you can remove all the bad actors as well. So I think without people actually knowing, they would be able to use NFTs. And that's just one thought. Um, and I like what Michael and Shreyansh and Sasha referred to, where um, it's about marrying the physical with the digital uh, and ways in which we can make it seamless. So insurance is such a right field for that. Uh, today, you um, at least, like I'm from India, 
and uh, there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of bad actors that uh, harm the like physical value of the land or ownership of the land and i think that if that deed is backed by an nft in general it will really like help people and avoid bad actors from like harming the system so i think those are great examples of how deeds and insurance can uh, work with uh, physical assets and digital assets and nfts can disrupt that as well so yeah well said well said so the final question here i wanted to do something a little different where assuming let's say all of our parents are watching this stream right now what would you tell them would be one or two tools that beginners could start using nfts with michael we'll start with you <laughs> uh, give me a couple months to launch my uh, product so that they'll have something that we can send to beginners. Uh, I think I'll, I will go with uh, what Tija said. And, and, you know, the first impression is the last impression. And if I had a beginner right now, I would say, hang on, like there isn't anything that's ready for someone who's not already interested in cryptography, key management, you know, the nature of distributed consensus. Like you just have to you have to be willing to bite that off at this point. Maybe NBA top shots. Um, you know, if you're a basketball fan, but otherwise, like we're, we're, we're almost there, but we're not there. And, you know, I'm pushing as hard as I can. And I know that Shriyansh is pushing as hard as he can to, to get us there. Well said, well said. Shriyansh. So I think, uh, my father is uh, pretty much very much into art. He has been for, I think for the longest time I can imagine. So I think this is something, this was a concept he also asked me, uh, what is this NFT and what's happening in the space uh, at the moment? So I tried to explain him it. Uh, uh, he couldn't understand actually what was happening. So I just gave him an example of Nifty Gateway because he's into it. And I told him the digital aspects as well of how things work there and all these things. So he understands the digital aspects of things. Then I gave him an example of Nifty Gateway and I just, well, he saw, he uh, navigated Nifty Gateway. And then they understood, okay, they handpicked the artists. Yeah, whatever art he likes, he also now sometimes he waits for the drops as well. Now, just you can just buy the art directly from your debit card or credit card. There is no crypto or anything like MetaMask wallets or private keys and all. So you think so it's easy for him as well. And this is something he understands. Art is something okay. You see, you appreciate. You know the artist. You will the artist. You know it's it's uh, copyright. Uh, copyright is right and everything. So that is something he really enjoys. And I think he has I think also bought like a couple of arts. This is I think. Just the one example I can actually cater to my parents and even my friends. The Nifty Gateway thing and who's interested in arts or art side. Yeah, I agree. Art is very um, straightforward and a lot of people have found pretty good experiences on Nifty Gateway. I've seen some good some good experiences. And that credit card, you know, as, as much as we all disdain using credit cards, that barrier is uh, <laughs> is low. <laughs> all right, Tayas. What do you uh what do you think yeah i think uh i mean if i look at it uh what i would recommend my parents to do is first get me into the game and <laughs> let me allow allow me to create a metamask uh like identity for them and then i'll probably give them this open space uh, so i found open to be a great starting point just because you can draw something on a piece of paper take a picture and then log into open and it mints it in the background and you can sell it. But it's still there. There is still this big huddle, uh, hurdle of uh, like ha understanding what a MetaMask is, not sharing your private keys. Uh, how do you, what does minting mean and who buys it? How do I sell it, et cetera, et cetera. What is the price that I should put? So I think with, I agree with Michael and Shreyansh that there isn't really a seamless way to get into the space today. Um, and I really wish that, you know, the projects that they are working on um, and I really wish I was in the NFT space, but I'm just an enthusiast. But I can I can just say, sitting on the sidelines, that I would really wish that uh, you guys drive this future uh, where people like me can enter it seamlessly, and I can tell my parents as well to do that. So yeah. <laughs> I like that. Let me uh, let me in the game first, guys, and then I'll show oh, you. So one more thing: if you like betting, I can say I can't say the NFT aspect, but if you like betting, you should try out Polymarket. So I think uh, okay. definitely. I should, I should yes, <laughs> yes. I, I will not introduce my parents to that. I don't know yeah. how much they'll end up losing. Uh, so. And also, there's a <laughs> prediction platform called Reality 
reality gaming i guess so they use nfts as a contract is minted when you let's say mint a bid on something then another user comes he makes another bid so nft uh, ownership get transferred to that user and the pool is divided equally between all the losers and the winners so i think uh, awesome. that is all the users uh, even i would recommend to my parent of course it's betting <laughs> but still a way to use and really enjoy that's yeah. that's awesome thanks thanks for that chance <laughs> <laughs> cool, Sasha. What do you think are some tools for beginners? Yeah, actually, uh, I think we actually have them. So, I please, please don't, 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 don't uh, think that I'm kind of like blatant advertisement. But uh, I, I need to say this because we have this game uh, uh, running on the Waves blockchain. Uh, it's quite different from what you have on Ethereum because, for example, you don't need MetaMask. You don't need to install MetaMask. You can use just your, your like email. Uh, there's some like decentralized email uh, authorization, and it's, it's called Waves Dux. It's a lot of fun. Actually, it combines gaming with uh, some kind of like profit making. For us, it's like some kind of a non-profit thing. We do it like uh, inside our core team, uh, more or less. But it's like something that should engage our community. So since it's a non-profit thing for us, I think I can uh, advertise it a little. So uh, I believe it's perfect for like beginners because we have a very nice traction within the community now. We're going to scale it up, and I feel that people have no issues of like of any age. So from like from seven years to like seventy years old, uh, you don't have any uh, issues with uh, those mechanics. If you can use internet, you can use NFTs basically it's more or less the same so our goal is to make it as uh, easy to use and as ubiquitous as like uh, uh, browsing or uh, social apps so check it out i think it's like it's just a nice example of uh, something that people uh, actually understand so it's called waste dust uh, i think uh, those games should combine uh, uh, mm. like some kind of like uh, collectibles uh, with uh, 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 some kind of gameplay that shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, and uh, now it's very important to have more of those to like to attract people to uh, make those NFTs very, uh, very natural and not so exotic as they are now for many people. Got it. Well said. Well said. Well, those are all the questions that I have for everybody that's been on this panel. This is fantastic. And one of the things that I wanted to sign off with is just to drive a little bit of adoption on some of the things that we have mentioned. I wanted to do a giveaway on Polygon. Uh, so if you guys are familiar with Art Bazaars, they don't know that I'm doing this, <laughs> but I'm going to give away five Art Bazaars on the Polygon uh, network so that you guys can learn how to interact with it. Everybody that's viewing this, uh, all you have to do is just go to the Grow Your Base Twitter account, just sent the tweet out for the giveaway so that you guys can interact with Polygon, get familiar with it, have some fun, and also go follow all of these guys on social media because these are the builders that we need to be supporting. And that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Such a pleasure. Thank you.